I had heard a little bit about the game from my father. Uh, he didn't play the game, but he was very interested in sports. And those who have a knowledge or history of the game would know that the Aurelia Terriers won the Man Cup in 34, 35, and 36. And mainly were, uh, were built around imports, the way a lot of the championship teams uh, were in the past, uh, Peterborough no exception. I remember some of the colorful names uh, Shipwreck Kelly played with, uh, with Aurelia. And I actually met Shipwreck Kelly in about 1949 when he came to Peterborough to try out once and uh, told him that my, I had heard little stories about him from my father. Things really started to, to roll for me in, uh, in 1948. 47, Peterborough won the Senior B Championship. They beat Fergus out uh, in a, uh, a six-game series. They hadn't beaten Fergus all year. And uh, they did, uh, in, in Fergus, I should say, and they did steal the, the fifth game there, and they beat them out in Peterborough. There were about 4,600 people at the game. That's, that's a crowd. Much rougher. <laughs> First of all, there was the seventh player. The, the rover was out there, which added to the clutter. And I weighed about, when I started to play senior, it was in 54, I think I weighed about 140 pounds, something like that. And, uh, and you needed some space, but so there wasn't much space. It was very slow. Uh, it was invented, as, as uh, Don Fisher has said, by the hockey crowd. And so you almost had your, your up front guys and you had your two defenders who stayed back. And it was very similar to the hockey that way. There were no helmets, no masks, inferior equipment, wooden stick, no room for a coward. <laughs> <laughs> No, when they took the rover off in box lacrosse, uh, the net was four and a half by four and a half. And they, when they took the rover off, they knocked it down by four by four. And the goaltenders, the goaltenders wore inferior equipment, really. It was just a, nobody manufactured equipment the way they do these days. They wore a mask that was a softball catcher's mask. And they welded a little gate on here to protect their Adam's apple. But their ears were exposed, and boy, a lot of them took chunks off their ears all day with that ball coming at them. Uh, no helmet on there. Uh, chest protector wasn't much. Our first goalie in senior B was a guy named Ozzy Tot. No shin pads. He, wore, he had a pair of football pants that came over his knees, and that was it. And uh, Bill Whitaker in St. Catharines played without a mask all those years in box lacrosse. So it was, uh, when I played, the goalie had all the bruises. Nowadays, He's the one with no bruises because they have all that major padding that's on there. Our goalie, Pat Baker, was all over the floor. He was a Port Dalhousie boy, uh, settled in Peterborough, but uh, they, they were good goaltenders. They were athletes. We played uh, two or three nights a week in the house league. In the Bantam League, we had five teams, and at the end of the year, they chose uh, an all-star team. And it was strictly win or get out. And we would always start with Aurelia or Huntsville. And uh, it'd be two games, total points. And uh, if you won, you went on. If you lost, you were gone. So two, you might have got two provincial games in, in a season. And, uh, but anyway, it, uh, it paid off for, for us. And we, we made that 1954 team and uh, won the Man Cup. I thought we'd died and gone to heaven. I thought, I thought that was the way it was going to happen every year. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of kids didn't know there was even a Bobby Allen. <laughs> it, it was a shot. <laughs> and uh, um, I, was getting, I was given a lot of credit by Brian Shanahan for creating it. That, that's not true. Uh, Bucko McDonald was an old lacrosse player, a good lacrosse player, who played hockey for the Toronto Maple Leafs. He had a great backhand, from what I understand. Um, First guy I saw use it was a fellow by the name of Jackie House who showed up in Peterborough to play with the uh, senior team in, I think it was 1949, and, and he, he threw a backhand. Uh, but they didn't use it much. Um, I used it a fair amount, but I used it as a weapon. I didn't use it as grandstanding, that sort of thing. I uh, wouldn't throw it in a bad situation because it might cause a turnover, but it was an excellent weapon. Going way back to Miller Bowl, when I was 13, I was too old for that 
Pee Wee thing in the morning. I coached one of the teams. And uh, when I was 16, I was the assistant to Harry Whipper uh, for the Pee Wee All-Star team. Uh, so I was kind of in it. And then I took phys ed, and, and I became a coach in high school. I coached football and basketball. I was pretty good in the coaching. I, knew, I learned very early on that if you're going to coach kids, you treat them like kids. You're going to coach men, you treat them like men. And, uh, so uh, I, I was able to enjoy that nice, fine line down the middle where, where I'm the play. I'm still playing, too. I guess that's, I should have mentioned that. That was part of the deal. We want you to still play. So I played, uh, and uh, you have to walk that line where I'm a player, I'm a coach, but, and it's nice, and I'm friends with all of them too. So it was a little tough that way, but uh, uh, I didn't play nearly as well, and I didn't play very much either. Maybe it was because of my, my high school coaching, it might have helped, but uh, yeah, two years later we won the Man Cup. Uh, yeah. We had, I had some good kids come up. I, had a few tough guys so we could compete with Brampton. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and Johnny Davis joined us, and Johnny was really good. And the East was still very weak. The West was very strong in those days, and they allowed the East to pick up a number of players um, uh, for the Man Cup. Uh, our best centerman was, uh, uh, had a broken jaw, so I, I could pick four guys up, and I picked up Donnie Arthurs and Bill Castader from Brampton, and, uh, Red Crawford from Brooklyn and Butch Keegan from Toronto. But ball control was so important and those three of those guys were the best centermen around. <laughs> and we needed that possession, yeah. you know, and uh, that was really good for us. In 77, Doug Budden and uh, Marshall Spence came to see me in Peterborough and wanted to know if I'd coach the Canadian national field team in, in Manchester the next year. And uh, once again, I thought that would be a nice experience. And so box and field, there was a real rivalry. I had an awful time trying to put this team together. We sent out 55 invitations. A lot of coaches said, no, you, box coaches said, you can't go. They, there was that conflict between box and field. It was, it was bad. And uh, we put it together and went to England. And uh, we beat England first, uh, and then we played uh, the United States in the round robin, and we lost 28 to 4. Boy, people just say, well, that's just a number. <laughs> 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 but they, they were quite good. And uh, anyway, we just kept regrouping all the time. And uh, we beat Australia, and then we went into the final game, and wouldn't you know, we, we beat the England, or the U.S. team, 17-16 uh, in overtime. And just to go from 28 to 4, to 17, 16. Yogi Bear was right, you know. It ain't over till it's over. And, uh, and really, uh, the guys believed in that, I think. And, uh, and I, used to, I just said, hey, they're just a bunch of guys with lacrosse sticks, and I think you're better, <laughs> you know.